Hello, St. Louis University High School community. It's great to be with you. Uh, it has been a, a long time since we've been together on campus, but we're getting closer to that possibility. Uh, we continue to hope and pray that your family is well and that you continue to uh, be safe under these extraordinary times. I, I want to first of all thank all of you for your patience and understanding through what has been a summer and a spring full of various different uh, anxieties and many pivots along the way. And I want to thank also especially our administrative staff, our EVS grounds, IT people, and all those who work so hard behind the scenes to keep the school going and also prepare for this new school year under these circumstances. Uh, we're really excited about the model that we have uh, in place moving forward and we're very excited for the boys to be engaged in the HyFlix model uh, on campus and virtually. We have been blessed by the COVID task force who did so much work on curriculum, safety and facilities as well as communication and other pieces to get ready for the year. And today our faculty are in, in meetings throughout today and yesterday, uh, preparing for the beginning of classes very soon. We have had that slight delay of three cycles to accommodate the installation of the uh, bipolar ionization units in HVAC, but I'm very confident that it will increase our safety level to a higher level than most schools in the area and put it at a standard that really can add some comfort uh, to both our faculty and our students and families. I want to talk to you a little bit about the work that's been done on a schedule. One of those pieces of that COVID task force worked on the academic delivery piece. Well, in the spring, we only had a couple days or a couple weeks to pivot to a, uh, a model that was non-synchronous or asynchronous. We have been able to have a, a shift towards a block schedule with synchronous learning, both in the high flex or fully virtual, depending upon what is happening with local CDC and local health guidelines. So I wanna tell you a little bit about that. We've split the groups of boys uh, into two groups. The first being the Ignatius group and the second being the Xavier group named after some of the first Jesuits. Of course, St. Ignatius, the founder of the Society of Jesus and one of his closest friends, St. Francis Xavier. These two groups will meet either in a one to four or a five to seven grouping. And there is a calendar available to see on which date those groups are meeting. Those will be block scheduled classes. And of course there are class one, two, three, and four on an Ignatius one to four day and five through seven on an Ignatius five through seven day. And, and same goes with that that is an Xavier day. The hope here is that the teachers who have done so much curriculum work and, and 20 hours of PD alone in the month of January will be delivering a academic excellent exposure experience uh, for those boys in person and those boys online. And we were able to run through this for those involved in summer school. And I know my son and others had a very good experience in summer school and we will be doing an even better job as we move into the August and September classes. We are excited about all the changes in our building. I've noted a few. We'll also have one-way directional traffic. We've reduced the density in classrooms, the HVAC that I already mentioned, as well as uh, physical barriers and screening uh, before school that will help us maintain uh, a very safe environment and reduce any sort of spread of the virus so we can continue to be in class and be together, which of course is our primary goal. Just a little bit of uh, a conversation of why we're doing a high flex model uh, when we get to that by September 10th. The reality of us uh, here at St. Louis University High School is that uh, we're blessed to have uh, a full capacity school. And when we went around and looked at our need to be six foot social distancing in the classroom spaces, uh, which is one of the requirements, one of the three requirements in order to to be in class in person. We did not have the square footage in both our classrooms or any of the alternative spaces that we looked at wouldn't add up to enough classroom spaces for us to accommodate all students on campus at one time. Hence the Xavier and the Ignatius group. Talk a little bit about the Faber day. The Faber day is that extra day out of the five day week, which will allow students to take all seven periods, check in, get extra help from their teachers, and also those times will be used for grade level activities and orientations and any sort of delivery of uh, curricular information outside the academic curriculum. So the Faber Day schedule is also very important and still being worked on, but I think it will be a useful opportunity 
for students and teachers to get to where they need to go. There is a calendar available for you to kind of lays out what each day involves. I know this will be confusing. I'm sure the boys will have it figured out quickly, but if you're anything like my wife and I, uh, we're still trying to kind of work our way through exactly how this is all going to look. So please refer to the website, uh, sluh.org, and there is a coronavirus element there that uh, outlines the schedule, but also allows you to access any of the updates through the parent newsletter that uh, Father Ian Gibbons puts out every Sunday, as well as any information on safety, screening, etc. I am very, very, very happy to have a community that has worked so hard to execute the Junior Ring Mass, graduation for the class of 2020, and so many other pieces that allowed us to remain a tightly knit faith community grounded in our charism that we have gained through so many years, over two centuries now from the Society of Jesus. I look forward to being with you as does all of the teachers and administrators and staff uh, on the campus are very, very excited to have everyone back. I wish you all the best and please take care, be well, God bless.